All right. Last time we finished chapter three um, with various disasters unfolding. Uh, you may recall we had two resets against Velius, showing that that fight really is very tricky. We also, I didn't count it as a reset because it was a complete mistake and we had already won the fight. But we did have to win this fight on the roof twice, but that showed my strategy is pretty reliable. Um, and yeah. Uh, the whole, they will target a naked character with Ultima and Ultima, and you can, Ultima, Ultima, that counts. And you can run up to them and have them hit themselves, and then one more attack. Um, your other two characters should be damage dealers, but almost any party will have two damage dealers in the remaining slots, and you should be able to either take out or get one of the three targets into critical after that. <clears throat> um, so, yeah. We have beaten chapter three. I put in my score. It was a it was a good score. Could have been better. It was a very good score. I'm happy with it. And we will now move on to chapter four. Uh, watching these scenes, I see why Quecklane and Velius were beaten. Celia, lead retreat. Listen, Chikuchi. If you want our stone, come to Limberry Castle. We'll be waiting. If only we had let Gustav kill Marquis Elmdor at the beginning. What a, what a mistake. Or I guess he wasn't going to be killed, but, uh, yeah, so if we say, if we did the ignoble thing, right, and tried to kill Weegrath when he has Elmdor, he kills Elmdor, we kill Weegrath, it's a whole number of future bosses taken down quickly. Not saying it would have been the right thing to do, but, okay, now we're going to... Ignore this because we don't care about reviving Malik. Again, I think it is a shame that this is basically FF's only Arab coded representation in the series, and they I don't I think they're bad and unpleasant. Don't like their story or arc at all, but you know, what you gonna do. Alright. So um while they're talking, uh chapter four is the only chapter where, because we are so low level, and enemies are going to be getting more and more powerful, um, sometimes we'll need to pick HP boosts over other stat boosts. With a five-character party, I think you should almost always pick the appropriate stat boosts, right? Like, a point or two in physical attack or a point or two in magic attack is going to be worth more than 10 or 20 HP. When you have access to more healing than we do and more units, just gives you more reliable ways to react to things going wrong, right? It's easy on whatever your unit to just throw item on and they have a quick way to revive a dead character and just everything is much safer. So it's more plausible to take damage and not be too fussed about it and upping your damage output will be the most efficient way to slaughter things. However, for us, we do sometimes have to think about HP boosts, especially in Chapter 4. And for a class like Summoner that is kind of slow and doesn't have... And its damage is actually going to be dropping off anyway, you kind of need to reach survivability points. And so one bit of advice if you do a run like this is, in general, I think prioritizing... One, one, um, one general like skill level up on this game people have is going from clicking like best fit to clicking the stuff that boosts PA or MA or speed, whichever one you're using most. However, here we sometimes want to switch back just because we're so low leveled, we're not getting much HP elsewhere. Uh, on the other hand, if you leveled up a whole bunch, like if you did this challenge run, but you know, you got to like level 35 for the speed point there, uh, or you ran up all the way to like level 52, um, then this won't be as big a problem, and you can probably stick with PA MA builds. Uh, anyways, we have revived Malik. Uh, Rafa and Malik will now join the party, and we will take their gear and loot them per usual. And chapter four is not so difficult until the final sequence. 
there's two parts that I think are important. Uh, let's go back to paying attention to the game. No, let's not. Um, Limberry is going to be very difficult, where Elmdor told us to go. It's uh, we, We're going to need to have a lot of preparation there, a lot of, like, equipping the right gear to not be hit by certain things. Um, because, well, we got another Zodiac Stone, because four Mav accidentally left it behind. I didn't think the god made holy stones, but more evil. Well, Lukavi made them to land in this world. Um, I guess it means whoever uses it will have to deal with the problem. Alma. Alright, we'll get back into the story shortly. Yeah, here we go. Uh, because between chapters we kind of get movement in the bigger war happening. Tired of the standstill, the Hokuten tried to capture Betha Garrison by mobilizing the knights at the front. Now you may remember we were given a mission to go to Bethla Garrison when we thought that's where Ovelia was being taken to and it was called the Impregnable Fortress. Now we ended up getting Ovelia to join sooner than that to lead a lefter with us um, and we moved on to other locations but we have heard of Bethla Garrison before and we do know it is known as the Impregnable Fortress. That's going to be relevant. And we are now going to be, or very shortly, going to be headed to Bethel Garrison um, to try to stop the war. The corpses were crushed by something real powerful. Was your sister one of them? No, she wasn't. She was in this castle, probably gone now. Only three shrine knights were here, no one else. I killed the one who turned into Lukavi. The other one, Islud, is dead also. That means that the third one took my sister away. Maybe they went back to the main church at Morand. They're following the high priest's orders, right? Then the knight who took your sister must have gone to Morand. You think so? I doubt the high priest knows the stone's secret. Wegraf didn't know the secret until he contracted Velius. And I think that Islud died fighting Lukavi. What do you mean? Secretly controlling the war to strengthen the church's power. I'm sure that's the high priest's true ambition. But collecting the stones and using the brave legend to use the people. You mean even the high priest's being used? Who took your sister away? I believe it was Vormav. He's probably behind it. What are you going to do? I'm going to see Delita in Zoltania. The one who replaced Baron Grimms as leader of the Black Sheep Knights. Delita is being controlled by the church and the Shrine Knights. Does Delita know the truth about Vormav? All right, Vormav as the super manipulator behind everyone else. Somebody to love is our final chapter, though I will, for the point of scoring, divide it into chapter four and five, with the final sequence of chapter five. Oh, incidentally, that does make me think, because spoilers, the final sequence will be in Orbone Monastery, um, that... The reason they have that intro part that I always think is kind of, why are we fast forwarding to something with people we don't care about, this, it's hard to be invested here, is that they wanted to start the game and end the game at Orbone, and have Orbone be a regular point we return to at critical moments, right? We go to Orbone, um, we start, we have our kind of beginning of chapter one is at Orbone, when we're fast forwarding to Avelia getting captured. Chapter two starts right after that happens. So chapter two starts at Orbone. Chapter three, we go to Orbone for the sequence where we fight Islud and Wegraf and get the Germanic scriptures. And then chapter four concludes at Orbone. So I think it's kind of a touch point the game wants to keep return, returning to the monastery there. Welcome back, Father. Uh, this is Olan and TG Sid. Yes, how are you, Olan? Fine. How was the front? You know, it's really horrible. You have to keep an eye on your own men. My reputation is shot. Huh, your reputation? What about Zoltana's? Everyone says it's because of you that the other generals are still here. Pledging lifelong loyalty, 
that's the Orlando way. Watch what you say. Sorry, I'll be careful from now on. Uh, incidentally, the uh, the watch what you say there is not so much a reprimand and like you said something offensive as we've seen people go, how dare you say that earlier? It's very clearly a uh, be careful about what you say, right? All right, what about the other matter? Like, this is not something that you can be overheard saying. The crystal-like stone was found in Goog. Another was found by the late cardinal at the end of the war. The Shrine Knights have been active, but we don't know their plans yet. What about the spy we sent into Morand? Unfortunately, we'd like some proof of the High Priest's plot and move into peace. Right, if they can show, because Orlando wants peace, and Orlando has a stone, ooh, they'll find out sooner or later. Then there will be real war. Well, there's one case that if we can show that the church was causing the war, we can blame them and come to peace because we can show that neither of Larg or Goltana is like the unrightful causer of war kind of thing. But on the other hand, where are we going next? Zoltania. Yeah, on the let's go to Dorder Trade City just because that's where we can get all the gear we need. Um, but on the other hand, finding out could easily cause more war. Actually, let's go to the bar first. Bar is a good way to start a chapter. Just see what the uh, the news is and how it's being spun. Mm. People are getting hyped about zodiac stones. Okay, future of the war two. Larg's army began to no mobilize in a stalemate. Um, Bethla is a strategic location for the invasion of Zeltenia. Zeltenia is the Goltana's castle. Um, and so if they succeed, they'll probably break through. All right, and then Larg's side would likely win the war. And we know about, oh, Monster in Riavane's castle, yes. Uh, there has been another unidentified monster. 500 victims. Ugh, sounds bad. All right, not too much there. Let's go to the shops. And let's go to the fitting room. What do you got for me? Ooh, a whole bunch of stuff. So here, what we'd love is the wizard rod, which is magic plus two. Best wizard weapon in the game. Sadly, we cannot equip it as only wizard summoner and oracle can equip it. Time mage cannot. This is one of the big drawbacks of Time Mages. We have to stick with our Wizard Staff. It's the biggest MA boost we can get. Um, our Holy Miter. We could get 16 HP, 30 MP. We'd lose a Magic Point. I think I'm going to keep that Magic Point. Our Wizard Robe. Um, we could upgrade to Earth Close for 55 HP or Power Sleeve for 40. But again, I want the Magic Point. I think for now we're still going to stick with this. Now here... Uh, the upgraded mantles, you know, there are better mantles, but they don't come with stat boosts. Uh, 108 gems is interesting. It stops a lot of effects, and it strengthens certain things. For instance, if we put 108 gems on our priest, that would strengthen holy. And it would strengthen holy, I think it's a 5 fourth multiplier, which is, like, bigger than most magic boosts. So if you are using a spell of any of these elements, something that strengthens it, is worth more than a magic attack boost. Now, you still have to figure stuff out, because what if, you know, you could get a strengthen in one slot, but there's also a magic attack plus two you could put in that slot, and there's another slot where you could strengthen it, and there is no magic attack plus two. You should put it in that slot that doesn't have a good alternative. And so there is some switching around you could actually do over the final chapter as stuff becomes available. Now, the real question here is do we want to switch? Also, Bracer is now available, physical plus three. Do we want to switch into sprint shoes? Is a speed point worth more than a magic point and the dodge? I think it probably is. We're going to be getting out sped. We're going to want to be fast. We should be switching towards speed gear. Do we need to do so yet? Oh, I forgot to boot these out of the party. Um, I'm not sure, but we should strongly consider switching to sprint shoes. And this chapter, enemies are going to be higher level yet, even, you know, more than we've seen, and doing more damage. Um, and there's a bunch of fights that, like, as we get used to chapter four, we might realize, hey, we're a little slow and a little weak here. 
This is uncomfortable. Do we need to make any adjustments yet? I don't know. I don't know. All right. Oh, we should be equipping Yuna again. I forgot we uh, we took off all her gear. All right. Uh, so let's give let's get the bag. Let's give magic plus one. Not really irrelevant. Uh, let's actually put this in the other slot just so we can uh, we can dupe more easily if wanted. If we decide we need more money, uh, we want maximum HP here. Earth clothes absorb earth, which would have been nice to dodge Weegraf's um, Earth Slash, but you can't actually get this. Uh, I mean, you can. You could go into battles and recruit or steal from certain enemies in random battles, and there's ways to get stuff early, but not for our kind of playthrough. Um, but you know, it's fine here. And what do we need in the last slot? Probably, um, actually, probably Speed Shoes. Yeah, it's probably the best thing that could be there. Oh, and actually, we don't need to be a dancer anymore. I forgot. So we're going to switch you to Knight because you already learned all the abilities we want. And that can give you a significantly bigger HP total. We can go from 200. Once we equip properly, we'll go to a castle. Let's actually just go to Egros first. And we can, I think, I bet, get you over 300 life. All right. So we'll do Yuna first. Yeah, so there's a lot of a lot of options now. So, ooh, we actually that helmet that was dropped is actually better than any helmets we can buy. It's pretty cool. Um, white robe we can upgrade to carabini army armor. Okay, we didn't break 300, but we came close. Uh, feather boots we want to be on sprint shoes. We want to get turns faster, and we can also get a shield. Um, 37 and 10 dodge, or 34 and 15? Let's go 34 and 15. Slightly higher total, and enemies will be more magic now. The Aegis Shield, by the way, is also really interesting. Uh, 10 and 50. 50% 50 to dodge magic, but only 10% on physicals. Given that Yuna is going to be at range from enemies, maybe dodging magic is actually more relevant. Let's go Aegis Shield, just for giggles. I usually don't do that, so I'll keep it interesting. And Ice Brand is the most powerful sword at this point. Um, it can sometimes cast Ice too. Knights have very low magic attack, so that's not going to get a big boost of damage when it goes off. But still, uh, a nice little weapon. And yeah. All right, so we got we got that sort sorted out. Now let's go back to Dorder Trade City. And fit gear. So we solved you. You, I want to keep on Wizard Robe. Ah. It's time to get a new bag. Oh, you can do the wizard rod. So this is what we're actually going to upgrade to. Um, because at this point, I think our oracle should be a holy bomber rather than poking things with her stick. Um, but first, we're going to look at the pea bag. Now, the pea bag comes with regen, which is not great. Um, yeah, so the pea bag is what it goes to for... Uh, we're going to buy that, and then we're going to, fitting room, we're actually going to do best fit. We'll have to take off the earth clothes later, but just to uh, set this up. And now we're going to yeah, put something on, best fit back to pee bag, cancel out. And this should have given us a second pee bag. Let's make sure it worked. Yep. Put on whatever, best fit back to pee bag, and it mistakenly adds another one to our inventory. And you don't actually have to put pee bag in the other slot, I believe. Like we don't have to scroll down all the way here and select pee bag and then best fit off the pee bag. It it however this works, you know, whatever you pick, you can best fit back to dupe that item. Again, you need women to do um, the bag duping because only women can equip bags. But as long as you have at least one female character in your party. Uh, it's pretty easy to get infinite money via duping bags. Now, you could get infinite money via duping technically anything, but bags sell for, you know, 25000 a pop rather than selling for, you know, say something for like 600 a pop, right? This is going to be much more profitable. I'm just doing this because I want to be set for the next chapter. I don't want to have to do this again, and I just want to have infinite money. So, okay. 
I think that's sufficient. We'll sell off 12 tea bags now. And let's go back to the fitting room, or let's go back to our menu. Sorry for the menuing here. Uh, let's think about what we want here. I don't want earth clothes. I still want the wizard robe. I like the gold hairpin. I like being able to cast slowly twice. And I want the wizard rod. Because oracles can equip the wizard rod. Now, there is some argument for sticking with sticks. Sticks are great, but the wizard rod gives plus two magic attack. So we're now up to 13 magic attack. We could even get to 14 here. I think we're going to take the speed point instead from sprint shoes. This gives us 12 magic attack, um, which is pretty good. And we, with our golden hairpin, have enough MP. We can use two holies and still have a bunch of MP left over. Each holy costs, I think, 56. So that's 112. So you might think that's only 8 MP left over. But if we moved twice, that's 32 MP left over, which is enough to cast heals or raises or re-raise, whatever we need. So I think the speed point is useful and good. And in fact, let's purchase this, but maybe we should switch to Priest. Because Priest is sometimes faster. And if we're not taking advantage of the fact that Oracle... So we can get... We're getting 8 and 12 here. 8 speed, 12 power. If we switch to Priest, let's see what we can get. And we should set up our equipment similarly. So golden hairpin, wizard robe, sprint shoes, and ooh, we can't equip the wizard rod here. So we're and we're still only at eight speed. Okay, so we should definitely be an oracle. We have better stats as an oracle. Good to know. Do do do. Again, sorry for the uh, sorry for all the menuing here, but uh, I like figuring out the party, especially at the beginning of a chapter. Wizard robe. Wizard Rod, Gold Hairbin, Pen, and for some reason it thinks Feather Boots is like the ultimate equipment and will always default to it. Let's let's also sell some stuff. Uh, we don't need potions. We don't need Phoenix Downs. We don't need Holy Water. We don't need this. We can't throw. Uh, and we don't want our Feather Boots anymore because it annoys me that that's the default. I think everything else here we may find some use for and is worth keeping around. We're never going to go back to judo outfits. Uh, the chameleon robes were so good. Let's keep them around to honor the work they've done. And I'm sure there's a bunch to get rid of here. Uh, we will never need this bag again. Uh, we don't need this. We don't need this. We certainly don't need that. We don't need either of these. Now, what's the point of selling if we have infinite money anyway? Well, I like clearing up inventory space, I guess, is the main case for it. We don't need the tea bag either. All right. And the last thing we want to do is we want to check where's our new katanas. The Muramasa is here. We're going to buy 15 of these. And we're going to buy seven Kiyomori. So we actually used a bunch of our infinite money. Muramasa is now our go-to most powerful move. Um, the uh, the Bison, uh, the Kutetsu has a base power of 12. So if we uh, look at our character... What's our current um, magic attack? 14. So our Kutetsu does 12 times 14, which is 168. Um, and uh, the, uh, the next level up one, the one we were using a bunch of, I'm blanking on the name now, uh, does has 14 base power, so that's going to be 14 times 14, which is 196, I guess sounds right. Um, and this one is 18 base power, so it's going to be 18 times 14. So that's going to be 56 more than the last. What was the last one? Don't remember. But we're probably doing around 250 a pop, so that's fine. I mean, that's, that's great. And that's going to be our go-to attack for the rest of the game. Our Oracle, I think, is now in holy bombing mode. Should just be, you know, Pick off two targets with Holy, and that's the main purpose. And Yuna is a dancing knight, but also very bulky, right? Yuna can, uh, ooh, we should um, set dance here. We don't want to go in and not have dance. Should be dancing, but bulkily, right? Now, maybe Aegis, hmm, now I think Aegis Shields is wrong. Let's actually, uh, 
Ooh, maybe we have to go back to the castle to get shields. All right, back to the castle we go. Because maybe we actually want her to be a kind of front row unit to give cover. But I think we'll figure that out later. So these are a bunch of fights that are just like kind of tricky and just show the game um, increasing difficulty. Now, I want to talk about uh, 25 minutes and we haven't gotten anywhere. Um, well, let's just do Dogola Pass. This is one of those fights in the game that doesn't have much story to it, right? There's not, there's not much important going on. But for our purposes, it's really a, oh, level four, or chapter four is just going to be like every fight things continue to be able to go wrong, but enemy units are getting faster and faster. And that's, that's really the, uh, let's try to remember how this map looks. Um, the left area, or what looks like putting these characters on the right here, puts them on the left on the map, which is kind of the high ground. That's what I'm going for here. Um, in general, that's often true, because the way FF Tactics maps look is generally your starting point is going to be generally higher ground will be to the left or up of where you begin in the way they make maps. As long as we're here, you cannot pass. So you flank. All right, two wizards, two lancers, a knight, an archer, and we'll soon see... Ooh, our speed point actually meant we get to go first. Wow, speed shoes are great. Great job. Eight speed. Now, by the end of this chapter, enemies will have like 12 or 13 speed, seven speed. So that's going to really ramp up fast. But we have two units with eight speed. That's actually really pleasant. Um, one thing about increasing speed as the game goes on. Wow, I thought the speed jumps would be quicker. But um, one thing about increasing speed as the game goes on is it means dances are worse. Because dances go at a set speed. They happen every so many ticks. And the, they're going to stay at that speed regardless of what enemy speed is. So they're going to go off less and less as the game goes on. Still a great, useful thing to have, but um, not what it used to be. Let's try to get re-raise out. And I'm going to wait here so our next turn comes quicker, and because moving can't heal us MP if we haven't used any MP yet. And of course, we're going to try to get our dance up as quick as possible. I'm going to start moving towards the high ground. And also move in range of the wizard, because I want to see uh, Aegis Shield lower the wizard's accuracy. Ah, shame they didn't target us exactly. But I think it should be 50% to dodge whatever they're doing. And I want to test that. If 49 damage sets off Regenerator, we probably heal that up very quickly and are not too fussed about that level of damage. Ooh, 216 damage guaranteed. See, this is, mm, this is scary. All right, where do we want to go? Well, I think we want to hit everyone. And there's only one square that does that here, so let's go. Chuck. All right, disaster. We have a backup plan. Meteor. That's a pretty good backup plan. <laughs> Can't complain about that. And that might go off. That will go off after the jumper lands again, and I think they jump from this area. So this is actually probably the better move. Charge one. Okay, that's fine. Um, it's a good thing they didn't jump at our oracle. Because if re-raise misses here, the oracle could have gone down. Uh, instead, our knight's maybe going to go down, but that's not so bad. So this should be 50% to dodge. Okay. Uh, our dancer's dead. Great. Great start. Oh, and they're not in meteor range. Ah, oh, shucks, that's annoying. Well, hopefully this takes out all three of those. But already things in Chapter 4 are not going according to plan. All right, not bad, though. Okay. Oops. What happened? Uh, someone started flying. Okay. Um, let's raise you and get further away from enemy units. I feel a little empty back. Hopefully that goes off when our knight has the next turn. 
our knight could run up and just like attack them. Our knight now has enough HP. It can um. It can do attack. Uh, I wish they targeted Ramza. I want to see the uh, the lower. Uh, sorry, not Ramza. Yuna. I want to see the lowered percentage to hit. We probably should have not gone with the shield we did. Physical is always going to be more frequent. Okay, if we go here, we can hit these two. That seems the best thing to do. We could also heal, but I think... Let's see Muramasa. This should average about 250 per enemy. Base damage 250-ish. 252. All right. Good to know. All right, great, great. Yuna might not do very much this fight. We're going to raise her again. Ooh, we have to move first. My bad. And she'll probably just go down immediately to that stupid Lancer, but... Sometimes the wizards will just target the unit that you're reviving. Eh, and that might, have, might do it too. I really hope this goes off before Yuna's next turn, so Yuna can act, but I don't think it will. I think Yuna will move to the bottom of the turn order and probably just go down to Bolt here. Okay, survive. Didn't dodge the Bolt. I was hoping also to get that 50% to go off. Hmm, we're going to go down here. 81%? Nice! Nice. And we got the Brave up. That's cool. All right, well, we survived the archer, so Yuna actually will get a turn at some point this fight. What a miracle. And we are going to win this, you know. Um, 250 base damage. That won't one-shot, so I'm just going to use the Kutetsu. Um, oh, we, I didn't check the Zodiac. Maybe our Zodiac is good. Uh, but if that's doing 132, our Zodiac is not good, which is fine. And maybe we'll... Holy you. We don't actually have a way to, like, do middling damage, right? We can do Life Drain, but Life Drain's 49 damage. We can do Holy, which is 170 damage, but we don't have a good in-between option, or 160, but we don't have a good, like, let's do 80 damage option. That's said, which is fine. And Yuna should survive that. Can't actually reach anything to do. I forgot she had fly. That looks so silly. All right, let's use Wiznavis just so she gets some experience this fight. Now, this wizard's a dead man walking. Because Holy's going off. Maybe we'll just pick this enemy down with Wiznavis. We should be trying to get our other units up to uh, Ramza's experience level, because he has a lead now. But our unit's probably going to go down again here. Oh no, they went for Ramza. That's great. Good blade grasp. Uh, Alright, if we block this guy in, he can't do anything. I probably should have healed on Ramza. Alright, we'll heal here. Okay, that will go off first. Will this go off before the enemy? Yes. Uh, so we'll, we'll get you up to enough health that you're safe. And you'll just keep launching with Navises. And we'll slowly whittle them down. And try to get everyone to level 24. But yeah, chapter, chapter 4, I think every fight in chapter 4 is extremely losable. And uh, we will doing our, do our best not to lose any of them, but they're kind of, none of them are ones you I have like notes on. They're never like, ah, here's a strategy that's really important to know. They're all like, you play them well, you probably win, but it's easy to not play them well. Let's go grab stuff while we're here. And we're going to try to block that archer in. Really wants to shoot Ramza. So 
So one thing we can do, if you ever just want your Oracle to like level up on their own and you're kind of wasting time like you are at the end of a fight like this, if you cast Pray Faith on yourself and then just keep ca casting Pray Faith on yourself, um, the first one puts your faith up high enough that the others will all hit. And so it's the most reliable way, I, if I remember right, to keep effectively like doing nothing to pass time. We're going to block the archer from being able to run away. I think he'll run back to the corner and reply. And when he does, we can surround him and then he can't do anything because archers can't hit units next to them. Now, if the enemy AI was smart, it would still target shots um, behind the units it wants to hit. And those shots would hit those units blocking them. But the AI is not smart. All right, we'll probably actually switch to that shield. That's nice because it means we don't have to go buy it. And we're going to um, pray faith on ourselves. Because if that hits, it will start hitting more reliably. You're still way behind Ramza, so it could start physically hitting, but I think we'll uh, keep this neighbor thing. Um, does less damage, so the enemy lasts longer, which is good for us because we want you know, a bunch more turns to happen. And he'll run back to the corner. Uh, he'll still be able to hit um, this unit, but this unit can also uh, heal itself. Pythia. Come on, 58%. Mm, doesn't look good. Anytime they stand still, not a good sign. Okay, wait. All right, so um, the next fight is interesting. It's an assassination mission. If you steal from the target, you can get some pretty sweet gear. Obviously, that is not something we're going to be able to do, but it is worth noting. Ooh, early black robe. Um, but it is worth noting that that is a possible thing to do. Um, and the fight after is really interesting, because I've talked a bunch about the first time I ever played FF Tactics, but Thinath River wrecked. And the reason is... Finnath River is like a normal fight against enemy monsters, but they are at level. So to beat the levels in this game, you know, if we look at the enemy here, let's look at them in a moment, it's level 30, right? You know, and we're level, you know, 21, 22. But in my playthrough, because I, I you know, couldn't beat anything, uh, I was way out leveled. So, or I was way out leveling the enemy, right? Uh, I was going and doing random battles so that I could level way past the enemy because that was the only way I could beat this stuff because the game was too hard for me. So I ended up being like level 60 or something facing level 30 enemies. Uh, I don't think I made it all the way to like level 100, but I easily could have, right? Where I was just, you know, I had to level to beat things, so I did. So when I got to Finnath River and suddenly I was facing, you know, level 60 enemies, uh, now, of course, doing random battles, you do face level 60 enemies, but I was doing random battles in, like, the places where the extra en the enemies are, like, quite easy. And suddenly there were these chocobos with ranged attacks. I got repeatedly, I think, really bad draws of the enemies. Sometimes you get, like, all yellows. Sometimes it's really tough. You get the other ones. And they were just running up and slaughtering my team, and it was I thought it was, like, the hardest fight in the game. And I've almost never had any difficulty there for the rest of the, uh, you know, time we've spent on FFT. But uh, it, was a, it was a goofy experience. All right, we'll let off one more cycle of these. And you can go for the other treasure chest. And we're going to finish this fight with a, with a big holy because I think that'll be nice and dramatic. Uh, so let's pray faith, try to get it on ourselves. If we do, both our final holy will do more damage, but also uh, it makes it easy to continue self-casting. Because your cast has to do something, and reaffirming a status effect counts as doing something. But like healing when you're at full HP does not count as doing something. Eh. Oh, we got it. I didn't know the animation for that was looked the same whether you uh, hit or missed, I think. Alright, we're going to stop Wisney busting after, after this cycle of them. So we'll be at basically level 24. Yeah, there we go. Wait, we will attack the ground as we are so used to doing. 
slowly grab this. Now pre-facing ourselves will suddenly have much higher accuracy, 100% instead of uh, you know, 58. Because pre-faith essentially turns your faith to 100 as long as it's out, and faith is a multiplier on your magic spell. So moving that to 100, it's nice and helpful. So we'll grab the treasure chest, and we'll just keep pray faithing ourselves for a bit. Uh, as long as we move around, we'll gain the MP back to uh, to be able to keep moving around. And our other characters will wait. And once we get up to, you know, I guess I'll be doing this a little while. Sorry, sorry, this is pretty dull. Let's fast forward a bit. Ooh. Actually, yeah, let's set off that, because then maybe we'll get a lot of Brave stuff. So let's um, let's keep our unit over here so they accidentally cheat to fight. And let's keep Prey facing ourselves. Perfect. Beautiful. And if need be, we'll heal the knight. Hundred percent. Do do do. Uh May as well heal both of them. You'll notice the heal does more damage than it's ever done before because or more heals more, and that's because our faith is a hundred and it's a straight multiplier. That's great. Uh what do we need? What can we do? Let's spell absorb. Again, we have pray faith out, so I should probably renew pray faith in a sec, it'll wear off soon. Alright. Sorry about this uh maniac need to keep uh, levels approximately on par, but but what you gonna do? Oh no, I let Faith wear off, so this could miss, and yeah, that's annoying. All right, well, actually, we'll maybe we'll just move into heal mode. Um, so if you wait facing the other way, this turn we can heal ourselves, and then probably our Yuna will need healing each turn as well. Yeah, so we can we can do that for a while. Only I don't know seven more turns of this. This gets us up to twenty experience. Once we're up to eighty, I'll use Holy to end the fight. Sorry about this. Doing some fast forwarding here to make it a little quicker. But we get some brave ups too. That's nice. It's not like super meaningful, but we don't want to go any closer than this because if we do, the archer will stop realizing it can target us. Uh, right now it thinks it can target us, which is why it's hitting the knight next to it. But of course it could target that panel without the knight there, and it would still be able to hit the knight. But it won't realize unless unless uh, it has an actual target it can see. So we got to keep a little distance. Yeah. All right. It's gonna be it's gonna be a slow episode. This one, a lot of menuing, a lot of just getting levels even. But Riavane's Ramza is always gonna out level the rest of your party. So this is a pretty accurate representation of what post Riavane's is likely to look like. Uh, Sixty five. So actually, I think this is our last heal. I think we'll just holy after this. And that should get enough experience to get everyone to level 24. And we got a final brave up for the road. Nice. Right, magic, holy. Very good move. 212, that will do. All right. One battle beaten. We'll do one more, it'll be quicker, don't worry, and uh, that'll be an episode.
Ooh, diamond armor. Uh, we might have picked up multiple improved armors for um, for Yuna. Right? Because um, oh, we picked up a shield. Yeah. So let's switch to this. Give better dodge on physical. That seems to be more relevant. We got another helmet. But I thought. Oh, uh, diamond armor isn't better. All right. Cool. No problem. Did you switch over to sprint shoes? Probably. Yeah, let's do that. Nah, we'll do the next mission first. The next mission is very annoying because they can break your gear. Um, it's an assassination mission and the target can break your gear. Now what we want to do is move him the furthest over here and then put the other units in our other squad. So there's a big house here, and we put Ramza like two to the right, basically, of this square. So we're going to put Ramza over there, our other units over here, and we're basically going to wait for the opponent to reach the front of the house, and then we're going to charge out and take them out. Um, there's a lot of units, and some of them are pretty powerful classes. There are summoners, there's ninjas. Uh, so we really want to just win this mission by killing the assassination which means we need her path to us to be as short as possible. So we want to start on the side where she is, which is sort of center, but it's easier for her to get down from the height to the right, down on that crate you can see. I'm Meliodul. I came to avenge my brother. Avenge your brother? What are you talking about? You're denying it? Islud, whom you killed at Rio Veins, was my brother. Oh, buddy. Sorry. That was your dad. I'm going to kill you, not for the high priest, but for my brother. So, new Shrine Knight to fight. I think the only female Shrine Knight in the game, Melia Duel. And yeah, they have archers who have massive high ground, so are actually like useful units. They have two summoners, there's a ninja, and there's Melia Duel herself, who you may notice has re raised. That's because she comes with a chantage. If you're not poaching, uh, chantage gives automatic re raise. And uh, so we're going to try to get re-raise on ourselves. And it gives um, regen. Uh, let's, let's name this one. Got to play the hits. Um, and that means um, nothing for this fight except that she is regen, because her re-raise uh, won't go off if you take her down, or possibly even just get her low. It ends the fight. But if we steal it, this is the first time you can get your hands on these if you're not poaching. And that's a pretty powerful effect. Uh, I didn't know this. All right, so I wasn't sure about this. If you're dancing, your shield effect does not go off. Because you can see the accuracy on that was 100%. Hmm. It's interesting to know. So we're going to use Kiyomori here. Um, Kiyomori automatically casts Protect and Shell. Uh, it has no you know, damage modifier, it is just automatic protect and shell. And if we have time at the start of a fight, that's a useful thing to cast. Maybe I should have cast haste instead, come to think of it. But okay, uh, this is certainly going to be useful. And we don't want to uh, to die to what Meliodul does. The thing is, her moves do a lot of damage. And just as importantly, they break um, gear. So we really want Melia Duel now to move into range, but not be able to hit us, which I think I have correctly organized ourselves for, but I don't have this fight mapped out or anything. Uh, but that's what I'm hoping is the case, is that she moves kind of one out of being able to reach us. Yes, perfect. Yeah. Being behind the house is great. So now we can launch Holy at her. And um, does she have a shield? Yes, she does. So this won't be a very reliable hit, but I think we still go for it. Because this combined with holy will, if this hits, ooh, and that critical. And it got the ice too. Wow. Wow, good work. Um, that could end the fight. I mean, that does end the fight if this hits, because Holy will do the rest of the damage. 
And even if they get me heal here, I don't think they'll heal enough. This won't end the fight. Uh, if they don't go for the heal either, so that's fine. And that ends it. Cool. So that mission can go weird. If all the enemies get close to you, it's pretty easy to get swamped. Also, if Melia Duel breaks your armor, um, then your max HP for the fight is reduced, right? Armor, say, gives you like plus 80 HP. If it breaks, that max HP is 80 lower, and suddenly it's a lot harder. Ugh, you're strong. No wonder we graph lost. Listen, the next time we meet is the day you die. Remember that. So, quick fight. Pretty easy fight. We'll do one more, actually. We'll do Finath River. Um, but, again, all these fights can go weird. Nothing's... That one, okay, that one's pretty free. But you do need to be able to output some damage quickly. Now, most parties should be able to do so, right? So I, I, that, one's, that one's pretty doable. That one shouldn't be a problem. But I've certainly had that one go wrong. What did we want to do? I had some ideas. That looks like you don't have anything new in. Yeah. I think I still just want the, uh, the magic tower. Uh, that's nothing new. That's nothing new. Oh, I wanted to switch you over to Sprint Shoes. That was the change. Get up to 8 speed on everyone. I think Sprint Shoes are probably, on average, the best. Um... So this strengthens Fire, Lightning, Ice. So again, if you're on a Wizard or a Summoner, which uses Fire, Lightning, or Ice Elemental stuff, uh, this can be a useful equipment. Um, there's a case it could be useful on our Knight, because our Knight is now Ice Elemental Attack. So that actually would be a decent boost to the knight damage. We're not going to do that, but let's think about it. Because um, Ice Brand means, you know, we're now Ice Elemental. That is 13 attack power. We have 7 uh, physical attack. Sadly, knights have trouble equipping for physical attack. If we switch to the bracer, we'd go up to 10. We don't have a bracer. But you can, you can still put a plus 3 physical attack. So we could get up to 10. Uh, so 7 times 13 is 91. If we got up to 10 power, we'd be doing 130 per hit. Um, and strengthening, what that does is it does 5 fourths. So if we're at 7 power, a fourth of 7 rounds down, so it's only plus 1. So that's pretty small. But if we were up to 10 physical attack, it would be plus 2. And so by equipping the black robe instead of the carabini mail, We'd lose 40 HP, but we'd get up to 12 attack. We'd be doing 12 times 13. That's 156. That's not bad. You know, so you could you could set up Yuna here to be doing pretty decent damage by combining element with an elemental boost. Now you could also get an elemental boost from this slot, right? You could put in um, 108 gems that would get an elemental boost for ice, but then you wouldn't be able to get any plus besides HP from this slot. So it would be better to put the Black Robe here and the Bracer here. I think that would be your optimal damage build. All right, so the reason Finath River will not be tough for us is because at level is actually way easier than normal fights, right? When I was playing this game for the first time, uh, I was way above the level of enemies because I could not beat them if I was anywhere close to at level. Now we are way below the level of average enemies. Uh, Ramza will always start kind of far forward on this fight. So let's start a little farther forward in case he needs help. Um, so it used to be, you know, we're facing level 30 enemies. My first playthrough, I'm level 50. But now we're facing level 30 enemies. We're level 24. If the enemies are now forced level 24 as well, that's great. So this fight is relatively easy. We got an incredibly easy version of this fight. Um, red and purple chocobos have ranged attacks that do damage. This river is deeper than I thought, must be careful. This is another no plot fight. This sequence to start chapter 4 has a bunch of no plot fights. Uh, they were sort of, did really, I guess, figure out a way to fill out the map fully. But this is the only chocobo with range here. Chocobos are fast, and if they have range, they can output a lot of damage quickly. This Urubo, uh, is of the, like, quirky genre. And the porky genre in general is one of the best for poaching and one of the weakest for fighting. So this fight will be incredibly easy. Um, yellow chocobos are not a threat at this point in the game. 
red chocobos kind of are, but it doesn't matter at this point because there's only one of them. And we're going to be a nameless vampire. So we got a really easy draw here. Uh, I think in general on these challenge runs, this fight is not a particularly tough one most of the time, but sometimes you do get a really bad draw. And suddenly there are like three red or purple chocobos all using ranged attacks and just instantly take someone out. And if that someone is your healer, that's kind of the end of the world, right? Uh, you'll notice the enemy AI is pretty smart here. They will not move units into the range. They know Meteor is going to hit. And they will, so that, this chocobo, the yellow one you can see on the left of the screen, probably wouldn't move as, moved as far forward because it would be in range to move next to us from a further back square, but it moved up that far to make sure it wasn't in range of Meteor. Smart. Now, re-ray is totally unnecessary here, but I didn't know what else to do, so may as well pop it out. And yeah. Uh, one slightly tricky fight, Edrigola Pass, two pretty easy fights here. Yeah, the Chocobos will just die so quickly. They don't have enough damage output. Their multiplier, I think, is just their physical attacks squared. Wow, I didn't realize Chocobos had such huge magic attack. It doesn't matter because they don't have a magic attack move, but this means they're hitting for, like, 81, but it's 81 times brave. So it's 81 times 0.73. It's going to be about 70% of that. You know, maybe this one hits for 60 or so, but like if it had low brave, like 50 brave, this one's 64, this one's hitting for 32, right? And enemies hitting for 32 at this point of the game is not exactly intimidating. This one's actually pretty strong, though. And they do all come with counter. I'm just going to sit here with Ramza. We'll let the enemies come close and then we'll you know, do draw out and our Mage Mirai will be happy. But I think this one does base damage 32, see if I was right. 40. My guess is they have, um, yeah, 40 is one quarter higher than 32. So my guess is Ramza has good alignment with that Chocobo for it to go up to 40. which we won't actually bother to check because I'm pretty sure I'm right. And you can rewind and check what its zodiac was when it moved to see if I was right or wrong. But actually, we know the ones that have good alignment with Ramza are Taurus and Virgo, so it'll be easy to check. I don't actually have to know many of the um, zodiacs because I don't know most of the connections. I just know uh, whatever the one Ramza's on is good with Taurus and Virgo. Oh my god, incredible dance. Incredible work. So yes, yep, it was Virgo. Sweet. Um, let's go after this one. Because the other two can pick off the close ones. Wow, what a dance, though. Totally wasted on this fight, because this is not like a challenging fight. But we have never had a dance that good. Only three targets, and it got Frog, Sleep, Sleep. Oh, man. Fantastic work. Let's go for you for 369. And let's go behind you and see what physically attack you can do. 130, good enough. 182 on a crit. We've had two crits already with our knight. That's kind of nice. All right, so those are three probably, I mean, that's definitely the sequence of the three least story fights in the game. There are a few more non-story fights in Chapter 4, or like that don't advance the story at all. Uh, but there's only one, I think, before Chapter 4, those deserters, and that had a scene with Olan after, so they clearly had stuff to do with that location. But Chapter 4 is the only part in the game where they sort of ran out of some ways to connect fights to the story. And given that there are 60 fights in the game, give or take, but I think it's, exact, I think it's almost exactly 60, course fights that like four of them ish are non-story five of them are non-story you know there are so many games when it's like 
collect all the chickens now while we, you know, figure out what to do next. And this, this doesn't have anything like that. Um, we could learn some knight abilities at some point. Would that be worth doing? I don't want any of these. Uh, equip armor would let us go back to dancer while having, like, access to some knightly things, but nah, we don't need anything here. We're here for the HP total. We could set, um, instead of brave up, we could set a save. But we may as well keep increasing our brave a bit before switching to that. Yeah, I don't think there's much to do here. So we'll stop here. And uh, yeah, sorry for a kind of slow episode. But, you know, after the big peak of Rhea Veins, what are you going to do? See you next time.